my hair is looking just stringy and sad. That curl keeper messed me up. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Suhanna. I make videos and I do post a new video, videos, plural, sometimes every weekend. Today we're gonna talk about two very, very common ingredients that are used in both hair care and skin care, but are mixed up or a lot of people don't understand their functions or how to use them properly. And those are humectants and emollients. So today we're gonna talk about those. And yeah, my hair, I tried to refresh it with Curl Keeper. So I'm just trying to not waste product and here we are with this sad stringy looking hair. Anyways, let's just dive right in. Starting with humectants, they are, like I mentioned, used in both hair care and skin care. They actually bond with water molecules to help draw in moisture to dry skin and dry hair. The most commonly used humectant in hair products is glycerin, which is why when it's really humid outside you want to avoid humectants especially glycerin because it will draw in a lot of extra water molecules that are in the air and can actually cause frizz. Some of the most commonly used humectants that you'll probably see in your hair products, and we see them all the time, are panthenol, sorbitol, propylene glycol, I think that's it, and butylene glycol, but those would be the most common ones. Next we have emollients, which I feel like are very, very misunderstood when it comes to their actual functionality with regards to what they do for both your hair and your skin, especially with skin. I feel like people get this or they mix up emollients and humectants and their function and what they do. Emollients are meant to seal in moisture. They soften and smooth the skin and your hair without adding any additional moisture. So whatever moisture you've used before applying your emollients, the emollients will seal that over. And because emollients are creating a seal on either your hair or your skin, wherever you're applying them, they also help prevent any further moisture loss. However, if your hair is already dry, only applying an emollient, like only applying coconut oil to dry hair, won't necessarily make your hair moisturize, it'll just seal in whatever moisture is already existing in your hair. There are two types of emollients that are used in cosmetic products, and when I say cosmetic, I mean makeup, skincare, and hair care, but there are two types. There are water-based emollients as well as oil-based emollients. What you will find in hair products, especially hair products that are catering to textured and curly hair, are oil-based emollients. The most commonly used emollients that you will see in your curly, wavy, coily hair products include obviously coconut oil as well as castor oil, shea butter, mango butter, jojoba oil, avocado oil, and almond oil. Knowing the difference between a humectant and an emollient, you do want to use products that have a combination of the two, which most skincare and hair care products already do have a combination of humectants and emollients. What you need to look for when you're reading the label is where these humectants and emollients are placed. The closer an ingredient is to the front of the list, the higher it is in concentration, whereas the further it is to the bottom, the less there is. When reading the ingredients list and reading the labels, looking for products, you need to consider what your hair needs, the climate, if your hair is very, very dry and it's not humid outside, you can use more humectant heavy products and then seal them in with an emollient. Whereas if it's very, very humid where you live, you wanna look for less humectants. Of course, one or two humectants in smaller concentrations is necessary to add moisture to your hair. You want those emollients to seal in whatever moisture is already in your hair so it doesn't become frizzy. And the humidity. Yeah, those are humectants, emollients. When you're shopping for your products, you can now keep this in mind when reading the product labels. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure you give it a thumbs up so I know that you liked it. If you are not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. I would love to have you here. And if you would like to keep up with me over Instagram on stories, you can follow me over there. But that's pretty much it for this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Okay, bye.